Hello students, welcome. Let us discuss part 2 of basic concepts of Mendelian genetics. In the previous lecture, we have discussed some basic terms used in Mendelian genetics and also we discussed the history of Mendelism and success behind Mendel. In this lecture, we will be discussing laws formulated by Mendel based on the results of his experiments. So Mendel formulated three laws and the first law is called law of dominant and recessive characters. Second law is called law of segregation and purity of gametes. And third law is called law of independent assortment. Let us discuss these laws in detail. The first law, which is called law of dominant and recessive character, states that when two organisms differing in a pair of contrasting characters are crossed, the character which appear in F1 is called dominant and the character which remains hidden or masked in F1 and expressed later in F2 is called recessive. What does that mean? It means that if parents differing in a pair of contrasting characters are crossed then in the first generation which is called f1 the character which appears is called dominant and which remains hidden is called recessive that character which remains hidden in f1 and expresses in f2 is called recessive character for example, in this table, we can see that the first set of parents is red and white, which means, say, that two parents are right, red flowered plants and white flowered plants. When we cross these two plants and in F1 generation or first generation, if we get only red flowered plants, we conclude that red is dominant. And after selfing of F1, plants in f2 suppose we get red and white flowered plants the ratio of 3 is to 1 then we say that white is recessive to red because it was hidden in f1 and get expressed in f2 so we conclude that red is dominant and white is recessive similarly in second example suppose we cross a tall plant with a dwarf plant and in first generation, F1 or filial generation, suppose we get only tall plants, then we uh, assume that tall is dominant. And after selfing of these F1 plants, suppose we get two characters in F2, tall plants and dwarf plants. So we conclude that tall is dominant and dwarf is recessive. Similarly, in third example, suppose we cross uh, a smooth seeded plant with a wrinkle seeded plant and we get only smooth plants in F1 we conclude that smooth is dominant and after selfing of this F1 plant suppose we get uh, 3 smooth is to 1 wrinkle plant then it confirms that smooth is dominant and wrinkled is recessive so you can do the other two examples where, where a plant with auxiliary flowers is cross to a terminal flowered plant and we get F1 generation only ex axillary flowers. So we conclude that axillary is dominant and in F2 what do we expect? Axillary is to terminal flowered plants in the ratio of 3 is to 1 and our conclusion will be that axillary is dominant and terminal is recessive. In the last example suppose we do we cross a yellow seeded plant with a green seeded plant so in f1 what do we expect if in f2 we are getting 3 is to 1 ratio of yellow seeded plant with green seeded plant so from the previous examples we have learned that because uh, the ratio is 3 is to 1 in f2 and green is in 1 and 3 is uh, ratio is yellow so in f1 we expect yellow 
to be dominant and our conclusion will be that yellow is dominant and green is recessive. So this was law of dominant and recessive characters. The second law is law of segregation and purity of gametes. So this law states that when two parents differing in a pair of contrasting characters are crossed, the two factors of F1 segregate or separate during the formation of gametes. So this to uh, understand this law, which is law of segregation and purity of gametes, suppose we cross two plants. First is homozygous dominant and the second is homozygous recessive. So here the homozygous dominant is represented by capital A, capital A and circle represents that it is a female plant while homozygous recessive is represented by small a small a and it is a male plant because it is represented by square in terms of pedigree representation. Now these two parents when they form gametes so these two alleles which are dominant they will separate during gamete formation so in homozygous dominant you can see, see that capital A capital A have separated and these represent two separate gametes and ho in homozygous recessive also when the parent is producing gametes the two gametes the two alleles have separated why when the hybridization suppose takes place between this male and female so these two gametes are coming together again so it is represented by small uh, capital a small small a and because this is a circle and red so it represents a female heterozygous female and this checkerboard represents that uh, 3 is to 1 ratio of female and male so this is law of segregation and purity of gametes which means that when parents differing in a pair of contrasting characters are crossed the two factors of F1 segregate or separate during the formation of gametes. The third law is law of independent assortment. This law we will understand with the example of dihybrid cross where we will take two pair of contrasting characters. So this law states that when parents differing in a pair in two or more pair of contrasting characters are crossed one member of an allele gets associated with the other member of any other allele independently. So to understand this let us take example where the parents are again male and female female is represented by homozygous dominant and the genotype is capital A capital S capital B capital B so here we have two alleles capital A and capital B so when this female is forming gamete uh, the capital A is coming with capital B and all will be same all the gametes will be of the same kind so here one allele is coming with the other allele similarly in male which is represented by square green square uh, but it is homozygous recessive so again the two alleles are coming together and when these two gametes are crossed in hybrid all this is capital A small a capital B small b so this is a dihybrid and in this checkerboard uh, there will be different phenotypes depending upon the different genotypes of the plant so this is law of independent assortment now this is an example of dihybrid cross where a tall smooth plant is crossed with a dwarf wrinkle plant and then they are following the gametes are formed on the basis of law of independent assortment and these uh, these progenies are formed so this is just an, an example to uh, clarify the concept of 
independent sort. Now, Punnett square, what is Punnett square? We have discussed that when the crosses are uh, represented in the form of a table, this is called Punnett square. And how do we uh, represent Punnett square? What is, uh, how do we define Punnett square? The outcome of a cross involving one or two genes is predicted in a square by writing down all gametes and combining systematically to generate an array of zygotic genotype. So this is an example of Pinot square where this is an example of a dihybrid cross. The parents are tall smooth and dwarf wrinkled and this is how the gametes are formed and the progenies are formed after the hybridization of these. So you can practice it by taking different examples. Another way of representing the outcome of a cross is by fork line method which is also called tree method or branching method. So how do we define it? Another method for predicting the outcome of a cross involving two or more genes is called fork line method. In this method, outcome of a cross involving two or more genes is predicted in the form of a branching lines. A dihybrid cross can be partitioned into two monohybrid crosses and for each cross we expect a 3 is to 1 ratio. Similarly, a trihybrid cross is partitioned in three monohybrid crosses and so on. So when we compare it with a Punnett square, it is much faster and more precise. For example, suppose these are two parents, tall, smooth and dwarf wrinkle. We know that tall is dominant over dwarf and smooth is dominant over wrinkled. So we just write a 3 is to 1 ratio for each pair of contrasting characters. So, so like here I have written 3t which means that this represents 3 tall and small 1 small t represents 1 dwarf and then they are uh, these two branches represents again ratio of 3 is to 1 between smooth and uh, wrinkled and then it is just multiplied the 3 into 3 represents 9 capital T capital S. So the result is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So this is just uh, when you compare it with Punnett square, this is much faster and much precise. So you can practice at your home and there are some more examples which you can practice. We can discuss more in next lecture. And so what we have learned in this le lecture that and from the previous lecture that a typical Mendelian monohybrid ratio if it is following the laws of Mendel R is 3 is to 1 and a typical dihybrid ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Thank you for listening patiently and we are going to discuss more in detail in the other lectures.